Welcome to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. This is the only podcast that gives you a raw and unfiltered perspective of what it's really like to be a professional cheerleader. Whether you're currently on a pro team, an alumni, or really curious about what it takes to become a pro cheerleader, the Pro Cheerleading Podcast gives you all the inside scoop and hot topics in the pro cheerleading industry and in-depth interviews of current and former cheerleaders. I'm your host, Makiba. Join me every Wednesday as I reveal the truth behind the palms. Welcome to another episode of the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. I have Alicia Harrington and Nicolette Peloquin here with me today. They are the co-owners of The Prep Talk. Welcome, ladies. I'm so excited to have you today. Thank you for having us. We're excited to be here. Yes, we're so excited. Thank you. And just for voices, Nicolette, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll follow with you, Alicia. Absolutely. Um, I'm Nicolette. I am a licensed special education school counselor full time. I'm teaching and school counseling remotely right now from Germany. But prior to my life as a professional in the world of education, I had the opportunity to serve as Miss Rhode Island and compete at Miss America. I was Miss Rhode Island 2017, and I was able to take all of the skills and the experiences that I acquired through that and years of competitive all-star cheerleading and apply that in auditioning to become a New England Patriots cheerleader. Ultimately, that was always my lifelong goal to be a Patriots cheerleader, but I'm really grateful that I had my Miss America experience on top of competitive cheerleading to really equip me with the skills and strategies necessary to fulfill that role as a Patriots cheerleader. So after auditioning three years, I finally made it on my third try and it was worth all the years of auditioning and putting in the hard work. Alicia and I had the opportunity to be on the team for two seasons. We were able to go to a Super Bowl and not only Which were we- one? Able- Sorry, um, I don't mean to- <laughs> I mean- That's okay. <laughs> I always laugh because our Super Bowl was SBL and Alicia, correct me with the eyes if I get them wrong. I, I, I. Yes. It's so funny that you asked because (laughs) it's a thing when you win the Super Bowl, the cheerleaders will get like a small tattoo of the um, Roman numerals. So right when you asked, I had to look at my foot to see (laughs) what Roman numerals I had. So yes, L, I, I, I. It was the one in, um, in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who did you guys play? The, the Rams. Rams. That's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Was really fun. And so even better. Say that, that one more time that you guys get a. Yeah. So, well, I'm going to show you, you on here because you yeah. can see it, but it's a tradition where you get like their no- Roman numerals. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. Of the Super Bowl. If, the if whole the, team does it. Most of the, most oh, of the yeah. girls on the team do. Yeah. And usually they've gotten it like on their wrist, but. I was like, you know what? I'll be different. I'll put it on my um, foot, little like secretive tattoo that only I know <laughs> of, or if I want to tell more people, I can. But it's a cool memory of all that we did being Patriots cheerleaders yeah. and being able to go to like the final game of football and win and all the experiences that came with that as yeah. well, like on the duck boats and stuff. So it's a cool tattoo for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And for girls that have been on the team for multiple years, are they just like getting a long list? of <laughs> yeah, like, When you cheer for the Probably Patriots, that's something you might run into. I mean, at least in the era of Tom Brady, you might have to be a little oh. bit worried about how many tattoos you're going to end up yeah. with. <laughs> you might have seven. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I mean, so this is how you guys met. Alicia, why don't you give a quick yes. intro and we'll Big back in, we'll ping pong back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm Alicia Harrington. Um, full time, I am a physical therapist. So I went to a college in Boston, Simmons University, and I got my doctorate there. And now I work full time in a sports physical therapy field. So I work with a lot of athletes. So even though now I'm a retired professional cheerleader, I still get my fix with the football players and so forth. So that's really fun and fulfilling. But kind of like Nicolette's story, when I was working as a physical therapist a few years ago and just graduated, I have my whole life done competitive cheerleading. And obviously 
being in New England, it's every young girl's dream to be a Patriots cheerleader. But my life took me in a different path where I was no longer focusing on cheerleading. I was focusing on physical therapy. And then it was when I started working full time where I realized that in my field as a physical therapist, I spend all my energy and time helping others you know, with uh, reaching their goals and bettering their lives, but I wasn't really doing anything to help mine. And so that's when the idea mm. popped back in my head. Well, why don't I try out to be a Patriots cheerleader? Because through the audition process, you work on public speaking, you work on your health and fitness and your nutrition. There's so many aspects of auditioning for a team that you really work on bettering yourself. So like Nicolette's story, I auditioned three times. And on my third time, I met Nicolette and we both made the team together. What's really special about the prep talk and why we started the prep talk was, well, we missed the world of being a pro cheerleader. So this is our fix to stay connected. But to the point of what I just said, it's a really great opportunity that a lot of men and women don't realize to help uh, mm -hmm. really hone in on their personal development skills that will help them not only for a pro cheer audition, but also for every other aspect of life. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was just such a unique opportunity to create something. I mean, a lot of people come up with audition prep, like in terms of focusing on dance and sometimes they have like a holistic approach to it. Um, but to see something that was very specific to just like you said, like personal development and your brand and your interview prep and just yeah. you know, these are skills that you absolutely need just in life period, I think. Um, yeah. Not just obviously going through a professional audition. Um, so you guys both, in terms of your friendship, came together the year that you both made the team. Is that right? Yeah. We did. Yeah. We got to audition together. We actually had the same mentor. So that was how we met. And then throughout the audition process, I personally feel like the year me and Alicia made the team, we were in competition with ourselves. We were not in competition with one another. And that's why it was no problem being friends. So then when we made the team, we were confident in the fact that we were the best version of ourselves and that's what we were focused on. So the fact that we gained a friendship out of it was just a secondary bonus. And then of course, once we made the team, spending practices together, driving all around New England for promotional appearances, game days. You just inevitably build that sisterhood and not just me and Alicia with our whole team. So now we have 33 other brothers and sisters from both years that we are on the team. And those are your people for life. If you have experiences that nobody else will ever get to experience. So right. it really bonds you. It does. I mean, Nicolette was a bridesmaid in my <laughs> wedding. And that's just how close we became. And it's true, yeah. like Nicolette said, you, in the two years of us being on the team together, you go through a lot more life experiences than mm -hmm. I have with, you know, some of my friends that I've known, you know, since I was younger, it's just how it is. We've traveled mm -hmm. to different islands together, you know, we've done all these cool things. So it is a very special bond that we hope to help men and women make it on a team so they can experience that same bond. Yeah. And I just appreciate being able to reflect on it, especially with people who become friends through this because it's just such a special time and not a lot of people get to experience this and I just love hearing how the friendships develop especially when beyond cheerleading you end up doing something together and you know in a way of giving back to this pro cheer community well, tell me more about like how the idea of the prep talk came about all of the things you actually hit the nail on the head before we even said it we saw that there was such a lack of coaching in the areas of personal development and branding. There's a number of different programs that are great that offer dance support and mm -hmm. can help a candidate in those areas, which is wonderful because obviously that's one of the main components. But when you're a pro cheerleader, you can't just be good at dancing. You have to be able to be a strong communicator. You need to be able to engage with people from all walks of life. You need to be relatable, approachable. When you're auditioning, it's not enough to be a strong dancer and just submit any resume cover letter and photos for your audition. You need to make your paperwork come to life 
And that's where we come in with that personal development and branding. And Alicia and I really pride ourselves on the paperwork and interview prep piece. When we auditioned for the Patriots, we did their promotional team. And the promotional team oh. had on fields. Yeah, we were a little bit different from dance. Okay. We had on field responsibilities doing tumbling. And we were responsible for doing more promotional community appearances than the dancers were. So we truly had to be well-rounded. We couldn't just go out there and dance or just tumble. We also were up doing suite visits and doing pregame appearances. News interviews. Yeah, being on the news, being called for interviews. When you're representing such a huge organization, it's not just enough to be a good dancer. So that yeah. was where our inspiration came from. Yeah. And I think, you know, talking with a lot of other audition candidates or, you know, men and women that are now on professional teams, everyone kind of says the same thing in the sense that when I was auditioning, I was seeing, you know, these men and women that were great dancers getting cut. And I didn't understand why until I made the team and realized that, like Nicolette said, representing this internationally known organization, you have to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk. So. Well, you know, I've toyed with the idea of like having an episode just about what the heck is being a brand ambassador and what does this really mean <laughs> about yeah. being out in the community and representing the organization. And I'm going to kind of put you guys on the spot to kind of describe a little bit more detail because I do think that people hear that a million times over and just don't quite get what situations you might be put in and why these skills are so important and what it means. Because I think not all the teams provide media training and anything to kind of help people understand like the different situations. But can you guys just maybe just give a description of like your experiences, just as an example of the types of things that you would be asked to do while you were part of the promotional team? Yeah, I think the first thing that's important for people to realize when they do make a team is that when you become a professional cheerleader, you're now two people. You're Alicia Harrington, everyday life. And then you're Alicia Harrington, the Patriots cheerleader. So the way Alicia Harrington might react to a situation is very different than how Alicia <laughs> Harrington, the Patriots cheerleader would react to a situation. Um, right. And so learning those skills you go out in public, you do a lot of different appearances. It could be going into a children's hospital and working with kids. Um, it could be going to like a trade show and just a company asked and paid for cheerleaders to be there to bring more people to a booth. You know, that's just one mm -hmm. of many different things mm -hmm. you can do. The organization can't always control what people do and say when they come up to you. So being able to react, but in a professional way, different from how I would probably normally react to someone if they said something to me that I, you know, didn't like, um, mm -hmm. that's like really a skill that you have to learn. You have to kind of train yourself to react in certain situations, even answering a difficult question or handling a difficult situation, at the end of the day, they can't say anything bad about the organization because you say something one wrong way, it goes right back to, oh, some bashing the, you know, that organization. So that's like one of the hardest things to kind of realize. And it's yeah. almost like at the end of the day, when you're done with an event, you can like zip off like <laughs> <laughs> that person. Um, yeah. I would always laugh because at the end of a game day, I'd get in the car and just not smile. And it was like, oh my gosh, I need to massage my face. I just <laughs> smiled for eight hours. I'm not smiling the next two days. And that's yeah. okay. Right. So part of being a brand ambassador, exactly like Alicia said, is just acknowledging the fact that not only are you representing you as a person, but you're representing a brand. And we were very lucky the Patriots taught us how to represent the Patriots organization. And another thing just to add on to what Alicia said is a lot of times you might be in a situation where people are a little turned off by the cheerleaders being there. And a lot of times it can be women. Mm -hmm. And if you're at an event in your two-piece uniform and a wife is there with her husband, she might be a little turned off by that situation. 
And just for example, the Patriots would teach us how to handle that. So part of being a brand ambassador is knowing how to engage with those people that look like they might not want to engage with you. So going up to that person and making an effort to have an honest conversation with them, ask about, you know, why they're at the event, how their day is going, just being personable and human. So that way people aren't looking at you as if, oh, she, she's just an NFL cheerleader and can kind of stick their nose up at you. Mm -hmm. We make a very candid effort to make sure that everyone has a positive interaction with us and can leave. And not only was it a positive interaction, but it was a memorable one. So I feel like that's another huge aspect of, of being a brand ambassador. For sure. Such and a good point. Yeah, that was. And another thing too is other things that we did being brand ambassadors were a lot of news and like radio interviews. So for an example, I remember one year when I was on the team, it was the night before New Year's Eve. It was the year we went to the Super Bowl. So our first year and my coach called me and said, hey, this news station just asked if a cheerleader could be available in Boston for an interview. Can you go? And it was very short notice. I was around. I'm like, of course, I want to be on TV. Like, why not? But to that point, the interview preparation and the preparation on how to handle the media is something that's so important because you get called in to do a lot of this stuff. So last minute, I didn't get uh, questions handed to me and said, practice how you answer this. So Mm -hmm. it's a lot of on the spot and it's live. So you can't kind of edit what you said. So that interview and media training is so important ahead of time. So that's what we really tell the men and women that we work with is this is going to help you for the audition process. It's going to help you when you make the team, you're already going to be, you know, Mm -hmm. 10 steps ahead of the game. And at the end of the day, so many skills that I've learned, even the way to interact, like Nicolette said, with fans and people yeah. I have used today as a physical therapist, when I go to, you know, my husband's company outings or whatever it may be. And it just, it's a great experience that overall just makes you a more confident individual. Yeah, because gosh, now you guys have me reminiscing, but yeah, some of those appearances, <laughs> <laughs> but it really does require a level of confidence to reach out and really be engaging and trying to connect with people and trying to find a genuine connection at that. So it makes me think of especially the trade shows, which PS, you know, they're not the most amazing appearances in the world. (laughs) (laughs) We've done my share, but you know, these corporations are paying you literally to not just sit there and take pictures because I think a lot of times people think appearances, oh, you go and stand, you take a picture with whoever's there and that's the end. But No, sometimes they're really wanting you to work to mingle and like network and kind of not like talking about their business. Obviously, you're not there for that, but you are trying to pull people in. Not that it's just an age thing, but for people who are shy or younger, um, not really realizing that that's part of the job. I don't know if you guys experience that, but sometimes having an appearance where you're with someone who's just not as strong in that area and they kind of like lean on you to do all the talking and all the smiling. And I'm like, oh, this is. It's a heavy weight to bear when you're in that situation of, I mean, you're bound to have someone on the team who's not as competent in that area as you are. So then you end up picking up that slack. And again, by the end of it, it's like, can I massage my face? Because my face is exhausted. I'm exhausted. And it's those trade shows, for example, those are the events you have to bring your A game and work your hardest because you're there to make the event exciting. It's right. just like fan engagement, but at an event that you're being paid to be at. Right. Exactly. And at the end of the day, you have to do a great job because the Patriots want that company to hire the two leaders the next year. So you have to really leave that lasting impression and do, you know, a great job. So that can be an exhausting in itself. Yeah. Well, I appreciate just this dialogue because I think it really helps people understand in more detail, like what this is about and obviously why the prep talk would be a great training and opportunity to build those skills. And we can all do it because it applies to so much and it will help you feel more confident in striking up those conversations and walking up to people and engaging them and making them interested in who you are, aka like making a team, all of those things. So 
why don't yeah. you guys, this is your infomercial, like tell us all about <laughs> what, <laughs> what the prep talk offers and how people yeah. can find out more information and get involved. For sure. That's Nicolette, funny. I feel like you have a good elevator pitch. So. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <a> smart. Okay. <laughs> Go to thepreptalk.com and pull up our info <laughs> page. So at the Prep Talk, we really pride ourselves on starting with our clients from the very beginning, and we hold their hand all the way till the end when they see their name on the list for making their team that they've auditioned for. So at least for the Patriots, so this is going to be a little bit more Patriot-specific they at least start with the resume, cover letter, and photos in the very beginning. So they might have you submit that, or you might bring that physically to the dance audition. We start by getting all of that together. We help you implement buzzwords on your resume and cover letter. We help create your image, your branding, your story. And we know the layout that they're looking for, whether you're going for a dance team, a promotional team, or a tumbling and stunt team. So we really pride ourselves on that. And another huge service that we offer is our interview prep. Our interview prep and our media prep do go hand in hand, but we have created something called an interview toolbox. And we create your interview toolbox to ease your interview anxiety stress. And we take information from your resume and cover letter and all of your life experiences. And we put five to seven of the most important things that the judges absolutely have to know about you in this interview toolbox. And then we teach you how to manipulate your answers so you can use those five to seven things to answer any question that the judges throw at you. So instead of showing up to an interview and a judge asking you a question or for a media interview, they might ask you a question and you're pulling from all of the millions of life experiences you've had. That is mm -hmm. so incredibly anxiety provoking, especially when you're already nervous because you're trying to make the team. So having this interview toolbox going into it, you just already know. It's like you have that elevator pitch for these five to seven things about yourself. And we've helped you curate these. These are the best things about you that show why they just need to put the uniform on you and send you out there with the pom-poms. So we really pride ourselves on that. Of course, we help with wardrobe. We have a lot of partnerships when it comes to wardrobe, makeup, hair, uh, we partner with nutritionists. So we really try to make sure that if there's an area that we're not pros in, there's somebody that we can connect you with and with the dancing too, of course. So although we don't help with the dancing, we help with that other huge component, which is the personal development mm -hmm. that so many people leave out. Yes. And to that point, you know, going into a audition where you're trying to make a team that mainly dances, mostly each candidate is very confident in that aspect. But then, you know, you can see the lack of confidence when it comes to all the other areas like the public speaking, the mm -hmm. um, interviews. So we're trying to make sure that as a candidate goes into an audition, they feel the most comfortable and confident they have ever felt in every aspect. And, you know, people might not think a resume, like a dance resume isn't that important for when you're auditioning, but, you know, in the prelim round of auditions, the judges just get to see your beautiful dancing and that's really it your resume that they get to glance over gets to show a little more about you and at least what we have seen in the nfl with the cheer and dance teams the past few years they're really trying to make a switch to show that cheerleaders are more than just a pretty face they're well educated mm -hmm. well-rounded so what you put on your resume is super important because there might be one little detail you put on there that sets you apart from the other hundreds of beautiful dancers next to you. And that's the reason why they want you on their team. So it's a huge part of the audition process that we're trying to make people uh, more aware of going in. And then with that, having the confidence and having a better experience overall. 
That's so true. And I think the process of preparing to make a team, I hope everybody keeps in mind how comprehensive it is. But I think you alluded to a point that I think when people are preparing, they spend a lot of time preparing on the things that they're good at. And you just kind of, because it makes you feel good, it makes you feel ready. And being in the uncomfortable space of, I really kind of suck at this and I I know it, but I don't really want to deal with it right now. And I'm going to deal with it, but probably not as um, intensively as you would, you know, something in an area that you're stronger. And it's just so important to feed yourself in all areas so that you can be balanced in that way. And don't avoid the like elephant in the room. If you really aren't comfortable with public speaking, it's something you struggle with or you know that you're not as confident with. I fully support getting specific help with what you need to kind of lift up the level of, you know, performance on all fronts because it is definitely, I forget which, I know it was the Rams and I cannot remember the percentage, but I learned it when I went to ProAction, their director was saying that the interview portion counts for like 50% or something, maybe even higher of their total score in making a team. It's that important. So I think depending on the team, I know it matters to all teams, but I think the level of weight that they might put on it might be very shocking. And so people definitely don't want to sleep right. on the importance of this preparation. Yeah. And it's so true. And what people don't realize is that you have a formal interview. Great. And, and they're judging you based off of that. But you don't realize that throughout the whole process, even when you're sitting talking to, you know, girls or guys next to you, they're watching, they're listening because they also want to see how you interact with other people because that is a big part of the job. So you kind of during the audition process always have to be turned on because there are eyes and ears all over the place to really kind of get to know each candidate and see if they have that whole package. So true. I heard directors say that, like, even though things were virtually, they really miss being able to read the room, being in person, because they do watch so many things when you think they are not watching. That is when they are watching, Um, which I think even Chrissy that I'm meeting today, she was saying that, like, she watches for just the body language when things get tough. And, you know, are they giving off a little attitude or are they losing self-confidence because they're being challenged in any kind of way? And these are just really important things to, to focus in on. That way you really truly are showing up as your best self. I mean, right. you know, you really want to feel like I put in the work in all the areas that I know matter and, and count. And I wanted to go back to something too, because, you know, appearance, I think a lot of people focus on obviously what you look like in the uniform, but I've always been amazed at outfit choices at times when it comes to <laughs> orientation and interviews where, I mean, everybody's stunning and beautiful. I know we have men obviously doing this too, but I think their outfit choices are a little different, but do you guys have any advice or information or perspective, I would say, on what people choose to wear for interviews? Because I think there's some myth out there that like pro cheerleading interviews can be like a cocktail dress of some sort. And I just don't know when we got, I don't know what happened. Well, see, at the end of the day, you're still applying for a job. So that's where sometimes it gets lost because sometimes people might want to be like too trendy or have like that different myth of how they should, you know, dress for an interview. But you have to still look at it as you're applying for a job of an organization that's very well known. So of course you need to be fashion forward, but Would you wear this to a regular job interview is the question you need to ask yourself once you're in that outfit. If you would not, do not wear it. There are so many times, at least a Patriot cheerleader I can remember, that we had to be dressed business on our flight Mm -hmm. to the Super Bowl, on flights to Canada, calendar trips. You have to dress businessy and you have to look professional. So when it comes to finding stores or find outfits that are fashion forward that are still business professional. I always tell people to look at Karen Millen. Karen Millen is my go-to. She doesn't have a lot of stores in the U.S., but her stuff online is amazing. Great colors and great styles. Color Mm -hmm. is huge in interview. I know a lot of people go to black and white because it's crisp, which works. But I always say try to implement a little pop of color because it's just another opportunity to stand out. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Yeah. 
Did everybody get that? Karen Millen. <laughs> Ellen, write it down. And Venus. Venus is another one that's inexpensive that has cute, trendy stuff that you can get. Write it down. Well, I'm glad it's not just me. You just see things and you're like, hmm, would that work at a normal job interview? Probably, probably not. not. But go ahead. I think the other thing that gets a little screwy for people is there's, or at least I've seen it, there's a lot of crossover between the pageant world and the cheerleading world. And mm-hmm. people think that what they might wear for a pageant interview is okay for a pro cheer interview. And I think that's where you get the cocktail dresses from. I even see some jumpsuits where I'm like, okay, we're walking a line here where that might be okay for your Miss Massachusetts interview, but it's not okay for your Patriots cheerleading interview. So another thing to keep in mind, and I always kind of struggled with that where I did pageants before I did NFL cheer auditions. Yeah. And I think just to go off of Nicolette, cause she nailed that, but um, I think it's important to stand out with your um, audition wear, whether it's for an interview or your outfit for auditions. Standing out doesn't mean it has to be this crazy piece. It could just simply be about the color. Yeah. So people keep that in mind. You don't have to wear something like crazy that has a lot of like slits and cuts and stuff and, you know, different, just change up the color because a lot of people play it safe with wearing that black and white, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, judges have to remember so many different names and faces. And sometimes it could be like, hey, remember that girl in the yellow dress? Yes, I really liked her. I can't remember her name right now, but I remember her. Such a great point. You want to stand out in the good way. And sometimes even colors that might represent your personality too. It's a conversation starter, especially if you do have a nice presentable outfit on and it compliments you and it's in a nice color. I think you're just, it's just begging a compliment, which can help you know, work in your favor. Did we leave anything out? So we have the pageant prep I saw on your website as well. So it's not mm-hmm. just for pro cheerleaders, but you have kind of the general job interview prep mm-hmm. that could yeah. work for pros as well as just generically speaking job interview skills. So that's awesome. So are those kind of the three buckets? Yeah, we've been catering mainly towards pro chair just because we've had a lot of clients in that area. And like I said, it it gives us a way to kind of stay in that world. However, Mm -hmm. a lot of what we do is very similar to pageant preparation. And Nicolette is kind of that master being Miss Rhode Island. And the reason why we opened it also for general, just every day, whether it's a school internship or a job interview is because with some of our clients this past year that we worked with, whether they made a professional team or not, a couple have came back to us and one stood out this young girl that worked with us. She unfortunately didn't make the team. However, she contacted us one day and said, you know, I didn't make the team, but everything that you taught me, I used it for my school internship and I landed like my dream internship and they could only pick one person out of like hundreds and I got the job and I'm so thankful for your help. And all of a sudden we were like, it's so true. This can be used for everyday life. And we're happy that people realize that, that, you know, Mm -hmm. is the goal to make a team? Yes. But at the end of the day, we win if we help you become the best version of yourself when you walk into that room auditioning. And that's the best part of our job. It's definitely an investment in yourself. That you will use undoubtedly. And Mm -hmm. I think it's really something that um, when I saw that you did kind of like the general job interview prep is just that Obviously, with the pandemic, we're all in this virtual space and job interviews are more than ever virtual. There's just not a lot of opportunities to have like an in-person interaction for that job or for that opportunity that you might be going after. And so nobody was really prepared for that. You know, I mean, I've always had Zoom interviews for the podcast, but like literally, you know, for other jobs, you're just it's constant video interaction. And so um, I understand that your services are virtual as well. You don't have to be like in the Boston area. But do you kind of talk and coach people through how to translate in a cross this little video screen? (laughs) Yeah, I'm actually happy you brought that up. Because where Nicola and I obviously have a lot of experience with the way the Patriots organization holds auditions. We do a lot of research for our other clients auditioning for other pro NFL, NBA, NHL teams to make sure that the way we prep them for an interview, 
you know, in the past two years, a lot of teams have done virtual interviews. So the way we prep, we make sure we're prepping them best to mimic the situation that they're going to be in. So we do a lot of research to make sure we understand how that organization does their auditions, just so we make sure that we're helping our client out um, the best that we can. But everything that we do is online, um, virtual. I think Mm -hmm. nowadays it makes it a little easier to just jump on a computer or on a phone to chat instead of having to drive somewhere. And it allows us to work with men and women from all over the U.S. as well. It's been interesting because the past two years with the pandemic, a lot of the stuff has been online and uh, interviews. So it is kind of a a different beast to tackle how you present yourself on Zoom and, and all that. Yeah, we've definitely had a variety. We've gone from preparing people for group interviews to individual interviews to online individual interviews where you don't even have a person on the other end. They're being prompted by a computer with questions and everyone's just getting the same questions. And that's just not very easy because when we have an interview, as someone being interviewed, we're looking for that human connection too on the other side. So when you're not getting any feedback and you're just being prompted those interview questions and given the two minute window to answer it, that is a totally different approach than going into a group interview with five other candidates in a human interviewing you. So there's definitely a different approach for all of that. And it was actually so funny the way you mentioned that the job market has changed so much because of COVID. I was actually applying for a new school counseling position that was virtual. And me and Alicia met up and kind of talked about what I needed to be doing. I'm like, okay, now I need to be coached. I've been focusing so much on other people. What the heck is going on with my resume? What does that even look like? So we started to use some of our own stuff that we preached to put into practice for me. And I got the job, so it must be working, but it was kind of funny to have to do it myself. I think in terms of just continually brushing up on that, I mean, because if you stay in a job for long enough, it's like, the dating game or something where you kind of, it's just this awkward dance of trying to get back out there and talking yeah. about yourself and all those things. And I mean, things have definitely changed. I mean, when you just said a computer talking to you and you have a sh- timed answer, like, good God, like anxiety already just thinking about it, because I think <laughs> exactly. that is when my long winded ass would just suffer. But I think <laughs> being able to talk, especially if you are in a group setting and being able to provide a response that's concise, that you don't go rambling on and on and on and on and giving other people an opportunity to talk or not getting cut off by a freaking computer. Like these are skills that you just have to freaking work at. Oh God, maybe I need to take you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that is definitely not a preferred style of interview. And we don't love preparing people for that, but at least we can say to you, you know, you're not getting anything in return and it's going to be like talking to a wall. So you can know that going into it and we can help you practice that. Me and Alicia will shut our cameras off and we'll put questions in the chat. So it's almost as if, you know, no one's there on the other side. So we, we have a bunch of different strategies that we use to help people get ready for all different kinds of interviews, just because kind of like we were talking about earlier, you know, say interview is worth 50% for your audition. Well, even if you get a great score and yes, that gets you through, but now when you're dancing, those judges in the back of their heads are sitting there thinking, I liked her so much. And you know what? She's pretty good. And I can, she's got the whole package. So it's not just, okay, she got a good score. I'm moving on to the next section. That personality translates over from your interview into your dancing, into your speaking. So that's kind of how everything ties together. Right. So interview is just, it's so huge. If you can yeah. make a personal connection with somebody, they're going to love you no matter what. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's always finding, Nicola and I say, always finding those, those little things that you think might not be important to put on a resume or, you know, you, you might not think is that interesting about you. Sometimes those are the things that people can connect and relate to. And that's what makes 
humans need that connection and you just have to do that with one judge and you're kind of set so <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And, and really be having that self inventory to know, because I think it is a little difficult sometimes to kind of brag about yourself or think about your achievements and accomplishments, and what's the right thing to put forward. I know that some dancers struggled with even in terms of putting on like their professional resume, putting the fact that they were an NFL cheerleader, I've heard both sides where some people thought, no, I want to be taken seriously. And there's too many stereotypes out there, I'm not going to put that on my resume and others that are proud of it and want to focus on, not necessarily focus on it, obviously, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily relevant to their job experience, but who have a different mentality about kind of, or approach or perspective of putting that on their resume. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Like, if, is it in your LinkedIn profile? Is it on your <laughs> resume? Like, yeah. do you think oh, that yeah. that's a good conversation starter or I... something that people can think about? I think so. I had it in my professional PT resume. Mm -hmm. And I think because if I can just sit down with you and explain what I did and all the skills that I learned, physical therapy, what I do every day and what I did as a Patriots cheerleader, it's like this. Because at the end of the day, as a physical therapist, yes, we're doing certain exercises and movements, but I have to be able to connect with you and you have to be able to connect with me to make sure that you're comfortable with me handling your health. So I have to be likable. I see 10 patients a day for 45 minutes. I need to be able to carry a conversation for 10 hours a day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, like we talked about, there's a lot of amazing skills that you gain from being a professional um, NFL cheerleader and dancer that I am proud of and I have on my professional resume. I also think that in New England, when someone sees New England Patriots on a resume, they kind of just want to hear more about it anyway, because our fan base here is crazy. So yeah. that's also why I have it on my resume. But I loved being in the NFL and it's something that I'm so proud of. So I will always have that on my LinkedIn, my resume, my Instagram handle, whatever it may be. It's for me, such a huge accomplishment. And, you know, I've had my husband's friend. So another guy told me one day, like last year, he was like, I've known you for so long. And he said, this is a guy saying your experience with the Patriots and being a cheerleader was so amazing. You became such more of a confident person. And that really hit me. I'm like, for a guy to say that to me, it's so true. And for him to even realize how much I've grown as a woman in the two years that I was a part of that team and how confident I became, I'm so grateful for that experience. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, Alicia. I think it's something you should add to your resume, but I understand there are certain circumstances where people might not want to. There have certainly been times where I've kind of made amendments to my resume and taken it off. And it was certainly out of concern of perception. Um, mm -hmm. At the time that I did take it off, I was young and I was about to start my career as a school counselor. And I certainly feared how I would be viewed working with young children and being in this position where some people view it to be a little bit sexualized, where in New England, it's mm. not sexualized. They've really strayed away from that. But out of fear of that, I did take it off of my resume for a little while. Now it's back on. And I feel much more confident in my talking areas when it comes to sharing my experiences as a Patriots cheerleader. But I think everyone's journey is different and you have to feel confident in it. And if you're not and you have any doubts about it, then you take it off. And that's something you share down the road when you have the job. So that might be different for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. I also think that in, and what Nicola and I work with a lot of our clients is you can put anything on your resume if you want to. And if it's a job and you have to write a description of what you did with that job, just making sure that if you want to put your NFL experience and say you're applying for like a physical therapy position, the description that you put underneath your NFL experience somehow is related to skills mm -hmm. that you would use as a physical therapist or vice versa. So I think, you know, if you do put it on, people know that you dance in front of 60,000 fans. You don't have to put that, but put more of a description of the skills that you utilized and that would be helpful for the job you're applying for. Boom. I love that. I mean, I yeah. think people probably just, you know, maybe 
I'm trying to think of what I even have as my blur, but that is so important in terms of trying to pull from that experience and what you gain from it that would actually apply to the role that you're applying for. Yeah. Great advice. Mm-hmm. You guys are freaking rock stars. I have <laughs> one last question for you, I guess, because, um, and I don't mean to put you guys on the spot. When I learned that Tracy Sermonti, is it Sermonti or Sermonte? Sermonti. Sermonti. Yeah. Okay. I listened to Bob Craft and he was like Sermonte and, you know, he has that thick accent. So I was like, yeah. I'm saying it correctly. Um, but just seeing that she was inducted into the Hall of Fame for the Patriots, the first and only woman to be inducted. And it looked like that there was an event that they had where some of the cheerleaders were able to come back. But I know sometimes when those things are planned, I know there was a halftime ceremony, but there may not always be an opportunity for everybody to say something or to be able to speak to the role and impact that that person may have. And so I just wanted to open the floor since I do have you both as part of the Patriots organization to just share any memories or impact that she may have had, just because I think she's a huge figure in our space and, you know, not having met her or um, actually, I mean, the one Super Bowl, I didn't really like meet her, meet her, but just being able to be in her presence, like we were sharing a locker room, the Seahawks and the Patriots right here. Um, But I know that my director, uh, Sherry Thompson, had a a huge amount of respect for Tracy. And so Part of me just feels like as the host of the podcast that there has to be some way where we can also celebrate her. And so if you guys don't mind sharing before we leave, that would be really, I think just really yeah. special. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for doing that. That's so thoughtful. I mean, oh, there are hundreds of things that I could say and I could go on and on, but Tracy and I always had a really close connection because I was a two-time stem cell donor and Tracy had banked her own stem cells to be her own donor when the time came. So I had been through an experience that Tracy had also been through, obviously mine to no extent of hers. She actually had cancer but we bonded over that a lot and she shared a lot about her personal journey to me and that was always really special but one memory i will never ever ever forget was that third year when i auditioned i got the email on valentine's day that i did not make it past the first round and i was at the gym and i had a hissy fit i threw my weights down i walked out why am i working out i'm not doing this this is the end of the dream for me. If I didn't make it this year, that's it. A couple of days went by and I was, of course, at my lowest of lows. And I'll never forget, it was a Friday morning and I had a missed call from Foxborough, Massachusetts, where Gillette Stadium is. And I thought, no way. <laughs> and I had a voicemail from Tracy. And it was Tracy calling me to tell me that she had made a mistake I was accidentally in the pile of people who got cut and I was supposed to move on to the interview round. And that year I ended up making the team. And every time I tell that story, I get like choked up because I'll never forget what it was like getting that call. It, it changed my life. And she's someone who just changed my life in general, because like me and Alicia said, it's, a goal for so many people or and women specifically in New England to be Patriots cheerleader. I was a junior Patriots cheerleader for year after year after year. And I just wanted to be a Patriots cheerleader so bad. So that year that I got cut and just thought that was the end of the dream. And I had a complete change of fate. I just, when I think about it, I just, I can't even believe it. And I'm so grateful that she believed in me and gave me that opportunity. Yeah. Oh. How am I supposed to talk when you're making me cry? <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I, right off to Nicolette said, I mean, Tracy is such a staple, like a, a well known woman in that NFL and in, in pro cheer in general. And before I was even on the team, I always wanted to make her proud. And I wasn't even a part of the team yet. She had that about her. And I love her and I had a great relationship with her and, you know, I owe who I am right now, the confidence that I have all to her. I mean, she is truly amazing. When you make the team, you might not be 
the best, best, best version of yourself but she sees something in you that no one else sees to give you that opportunity. And I've seen it with myself. I've seen it with Nicolette. I've seen it with all my teammates. And she's just such a special, amazing woman that has given me all these experiences and opportunities that I'll never forget and gave me this sisterhood that is the most supportive, loving sisterhood ever. And Tracy, is an amazing woman and I wish she was still here with us. And I wish I told her 500 more times how special she was and how grateful I am to have known her. And she was our second moms. I mean, she taught us a lot and she deserves to be in that hall of fame more than any person there. So. Wow. Couldn't have said it better now that I'm tearing up. <laughs> Now that we're all tearing up, I, I, really, I really appreciate that though, because I don't know, it's been on my heart for a while. And I was like, I don't want to just like put out like an APB of like, Hey, if you have a story to share, like, I don't know, you know, you just want to be respectful and yeah. nothing really can do anything justice when you're trying to speak to how somebody changed your life or impacted you in a very positive way and doing it in a, you know, a real meaningful way. But I just really appreciate you guys just sharing in this way because um, I think it makes it makes me think of people that we come across, whether it's a captain, whether it's a director, a choreographer, somebody in your life that has really helped place you in the position that you're in and being able to, to your point, say it now and say it often, how much you appreciate, you know, them being in your life. Um, I think it's just an opportunity that we probably all don't take advantage of enough just to say um, thank you for all the work that you do and knowing that our directors are it's not just when they're with us for practice I mean they're working around the clock pretty much I don't even know how they do it and they're constantly thinking of your best interests and the good of the program and so it's just something that I hope people listening are inspired by to just not just at the end of the year banquet finding a gift but just other smaller ways that probably you have no idea how it might impact that person to hear that from um, the people that they sacrifice the most for. Yeah, for sure. And I want to mention this because it just talks about how selfless Tracy was. And I think majority of the directors and uh, coaches in, in the NFL or, you know, pro cheer world. I first want to say, I think we as cheerleaders in the moment don't realize how hard their job is to um, <laughs> to manage all like 32, 34 of us on a team, all 34 women who think they're the best at what they do. So yeah. I give Tracy and now the current directors a lot of credit for all that they do to represent us and help us. But a story that I have to share because it's something that I'll never obviously forget is Tracy was in the hospital on her deathbed trying to fight for her life for cancer and my husband boyfriend at the time he called Tracy and Sean he worked for the Patriots uh, he was a software engineer he called Tracy and said I want to propose to Alicia um, on the field at this game in front of like all family and friends can you help me out she was fighting for her life in a hospital and was on the phone with Sean every day, making a plan of how it's going to happen. Oh, this is where you're going to stand. This is how it's going to go. So Alicia doesn't find out. And it worked out perfectly. And I just think about it. If I was in the hospital fighting for my life for cancer, would I put my life aside to make this event go on for someone and that's just who she was and she called she couldn't make it I guess I called her after when it all happened and Sean told me like I've been on the phone with Tracy for like weeks and months planning this and I called her and she was crying and she's like I begged my doctor to let me leave to come to that game I really and like I'm like are you kidding me and she's like I am so sorry I'm never gonna let myself live it down that I couldn't make it to that game. Like I really wanted to be there. I hope, you know, like I gave my doctor a hard time to let me go. And that is something I'll never forget because she loves all of us and cared for all of us so much that she puts our experiences 
and mm -hmm. our life before hers. Yeah. Okay. We're like all crying. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so, and, and, and that goes for, I'm sure all the directors, I mean, they, they do have a hard, hard job managing all of us. And maybe at some times they're hard on us and we don't see that love, but at the end of the day, they will do anything for us and we'll always have our backs. So true. Everybody go hug your director. I know. <laughs> yeah, <please>. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing. I mean, it's opportunities like this that you really feel like the essence of a person. And I've been following her since she passed. And it's just, this is just a beautiful way to understand firsthand, like the impact that she had on her dancers. And I thank you for sharing that with everybody. Gosh, now I don't <laughs> want to let you guys go. <laughs> but, I, but just bring it all back. I mean, what a wonderful way to give back to the organization. I think you're probably passing along jewels of wisdom that Tracy may have instilled in you and all the people that you're able to serve with the prep talk. So thank you both for starting that venture and um, helping people in an area that I hopefully they are not sleeping on. It's just something that's super important and helpful and applicable to all areas of your life, frankly. And so just another way to kind of invest in yourself and being the best that you can be, not just for auditions, but whatever you're pursuing. So I thank you both for your time and yes. all the fields today. <laughs> yes. Thank this you so much for having me. Yeah, this is great. And for anyone out there who already knows they want to audition, message us. If you're thinking about it and you're not sure, message us. Clearly, Nicola and I love to talk because we're keeping you on this for so long. Um, but you can email us at contactthepreptalk at gmail.com. You can look at our website at www.thepreptalk.com or on uh, social media where our handle is at the prep talk underscore. Uh, message us. Even if you just want to quickly chat, we love talking and we love doing what we do. Awesome. And all of those things will be linked in the podcast episode too. So people can find you, but thank you both so much. I seriously oh I really appreciate this. <laughs> thank this you is so awesome. much. Thanks so much for listening to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. You can follow your favorite podcast on social media at Pro Cheerleading Podcast on Instagram, at Pro Cheer Podcast on Twitter. We're on Facebook, on YouTube, and you can support your favorite podcast on Patreon. Until next time, keep your eyes on the sidelines.